the first of june for me as a student who studied in the schools of kerala that excitement of getting the freedom to walk down to the school in slush mud and pouring rainfall at least would excite you for a week until you fall sick you know of a of a flu but now it's missing children are going to school looking at dry skies so the felt reality has shifted this is a view shared by many others from delayed onsets marked by intense dry spells to devastating flash floods and destructive landslides the monsoon in recent years have been a period of uncertainty and destruction for india although there are various factors behind it there is a general consensus among scientists that climate change plays a major role the southwest monsoon that brings rain to the subcontinent during june and july happens due to the heating up of the asian landmass in the northern hemisphere during the scorching summer and the relative cooling of the southern indian ocean starting from the spring time onwards the lands get land or entire landmass distributed over the northern hemisphere over our region indian and asian region all this land landmass get heated up fast and th- there will be a low pressure created in the northern hemisphere somewhere uh, in the middle east extending all the way up to uh, western india there is a low pressure system and counterpart in the southern hemisphere there is a high pressure system around the madagascar region that is known as muscarine high so it is uh, something uh close to uh, african coast there is madagascar there is a high pressure and the, on the northern hemisphere or our region there is a low pressure so that means naturally from high pressure to low pressure circulation starts so due to the rotation of this earth uh, curvature and rotation so that means the, the when wind crosses the equator it tends towards right and coming towards indian indian region as uh, indian south uh, southwest monsoon Climatologists have been observing the impact of climate change in influencing monsoons for a while now. The excess heating of the Arabian Sea and Indian Ocean that happened over the last 50 years is said to be a major factor in changing monsoons. The Indian Ocean have been warming at a rate higher than other oceans as it is landlocked in the north and can only dissipate heat through the south pole. Dr. Abhilash says this excess warming of Indian Ocean and Arabian Sea is disturbing the north-south thermal gradient that is causing the monsoon. leading to delayed onsets due to conditions not being ideal for monsoon winds to occur as well as erratic rainfall marked by prolonged dry spells moreover short spells of extremely intense rainfalls are happening mainly due to formation of clouds with much more moisture content than usual as a result of deep convection weather forecast agencies like indian meteorological department use large mathematical models called dynamical models for making weather predictions Now these models running on supercomputers are fed with atmospheric and oceanographic data for generating various forecasts including those related to monsoon rainfall. Dr M Rajivan, a former secretary of Ministry of Earth Sciences says the change in behavior of monsoon is affecting forecasting as well. The mathematical models which we use have some problems in getting this kind of a short spell and long the heavy spell heavy rainfall spells with the heavy precipitation spells. the model does have a kind of a bias so for example if it rains only uh, for example 12 cm the model doesn't really pick up 12 so it uh, picks up maybe 7 or 8 but it gives a kind of indication saying that going, it is going to be heavy rain but doesn't really give that kind of amount which uh, i can use it so there is a systematic bias in the model models tend to the pre- don't predict properly the exact amount the quantity of the rain the underestimate the model the rainfall so uh, this is one of the reason so and now the frequency of this uh, heavy rainfall amounts is going to increase because of the global warming and climate change so then uh, this kind of errors also can get accumulation in future for so uh, modelers are uh, really doing uh, extraordinary work to improve this kind of bias so remove this bias and so that the models are capable of predicting the heavy rains also it's a very challenging job so we need to really work out that so we need to increase the resolution we need to assimilate more data we need to really improve the physics so then we can change uh, the characteristics of our model forecast dr rajivan explains that to improve the short range rainfall forecast that predicts rain for the next 4 to 5 days models will have to be improved especially our understanding of cloud physics that is how the cloud forms how it moves 
the amount of precipitation it holds and so on. We will also need better satellites for improved oceanographic and cloud related data collections. These changes to monsoon patterns are causing severe challenges to disaster management as well. Dr. Shekhar L. Kuryakos, Chief Scientist of Kerala State Disaster Management Authority says that a good portion of the blame for recent rain-related disasters is due to our land use patterns. The difficulty of that is a large amount of rainfall, so the amount is not drastically changing, there is a large amount of rainfall concentrated in a place and then causing flash floods and debris flows and landslides. As against a more evenly spaced, both in time and space, evenly spaced rainfall which contributes to subsurface water storage and reservoir water storage. Dr. Kuriakos believes that system seems to be rapidly changing and is not showing any predictable patterns for disaster managers to rely on static centralized management plans to tackle rain-related disasters. In Kerala, there has also been considerable decentralization in disaster response as local bodies have been trained and empowered for disaster management. This shift largely occurred after the 2018 floods in Kerala. See, a lot of course corrections started happening in 2018 and 2018 for that matter was a revelation for the state to shift their one of the last remaining centralized approach towards governance. That being, Honorable Chief Minister took that decision in 2019 to empower local governments for disaster risk reduction. To quote from Spider-Man, a friendly neighborhood is the answer. And that friend in need needs to also be trained has to have that capability to not put himself in danger and then save somebody else. So, we started with a massive program called Nammal Damukai, a program to localize DRR. As part of that, we also, and aligned to that, we also created civil defense across the state. India is the only state to have civil defense notified pan state. In other places, these are in townships and pockets, but here it's one whole state. Another possible outcome is the local bodies are now able to access funds to prepare for disasters, rather than wait for the government to disperse funds. Moreover, those living in disaster-prone hilly and coastal areas are being encouraged to shift to safer grounds by providing them with land, housing or financial incentives to relocate.